All right. Uh, so, apologize, lighting's not the best here. Uh, it, uh, it's nighttime, and I have one task light lighting up this whole thing. Uh, what I have here is the back end of a Club Car DS99. Got it. Um, see if I can zoom in on this here. This is a 10 amp motor. It's been upgraded. The front has a 6 inch uh, lift kit A-frame. I guess I'm going to have this for running around. Um, it's a project car cart. The, uh, there was one I wanted that was all put together and looked really nice. So, but uh, it got sold three hours before I arrived. Uh, I was a little bitter about that, but uh, this, um, but I ended up getting this guy, which um, has a much powerful motor, has uh, 22 inch tires. You can see there. I don't know if the light showed up, but uh, we'll see. Well, you can see this. You can see this one here, or no? You can see. Yeah, you can see that tower. Um, so I've been going through reading the instructions. It's had some upgrades. It, person that had it never completed it and um, I got to a point here uh, so first off part of the instructions and I'll just try here and see if uh, you can see this was to take uh, you cut into a blue wire here and that is blue it might not it might show as black at this time and use this butt connector to, uh, to splice it in. So you end up trying to shove three things up in there for something that's made for one wire. And uh, this is, these instructions come from Alltrax, who makes the DCX uh, the DCX uh, 500 amp controller. And actually, being a ham radio guy, I, I really doubted that. I'm like, 500 amps? Surely they mean 500 watts, because it's a 10 amp motor. Or it's a Technically, it's a 10 horsepower motor with and at 48 volts, 480. Um, you know that comes to 480 uh, watts. So I said a 500 amp controller makes sense, or a 500 watt controller makes sense. But no, it is 500 amps according to their website. And uh, apparently, you know that's 24,000 watts. Uh, yeah, 48 volts. So I I really doubted that. But apparently, you get surges whenever you press the gas when this motor kicks in. You can uh, you can get some really high amperage, high wattage um, surges, and that's what this amp can handle. And it's also programmable. Um, anyway, so I was talking about the wires. And they wanted you to get do these butt connectors, um, according to the instructions. I did that for two of them, and it was very difficult because they don't fit in there. So if you're going to do one of these, I would get. Uh, these taps places. That works so much better. At the front I had to do one where it was like four wires going into their butt connector and that just uh, was not working out. <laughs> so I got the uh, I got the tap connector. Um, what I want to talk about additionally is there's some confusion that really had me going for a while. So this is a solenoid with a uh, with a resistor across it and I knew about that and I knew and I knew he had gotten this, um, uh, the, the person I worked on it before had gotten this larger uh, 400 amp solenoid. And I thought this was going to replace that, but as I went dove into it, it turns out there's actually, on the original diagram, there's a solenoid that goes here. Uh, this one clamps onto there. And, um, and I found three solenoids in the pack. I found the new, the one he bought, the 400 amp. I bought, I found this one called White Rogers Type 586. I looked that up, it's a 200 amp. And then I found this this other one sitting here, which um, is Trumpety something. These are all 48 volts. Uh, this one doesn't list the amp, but I'm not sure what it is. But I assume this is the OEM solenoid, this Trumpety, it's Trumpetini. And then at some point it was upgraded to the White Rogers 200 amp one. And that one would have went here. All right. There's a bolt there in my way, but essentially it would have went right here. There's, some, there's two screw holes against the clamp. You can't see that. Ah, the light 
also is a problem. But yeah, there's two screw holes uh, go in there. And uh, but this controller is bigger than the oh, the stock one. I spent a lot of time looking at these three solenoids that came with it, plus that one, trying to figure out what in the world am I supposed to do here. But eventually, uh, and also the instructions talked about a blue wire going to the solenoid, so I was looking at this one on this side, and there's no blue wire to it. But I did find three uh, blue three wires down here, each one going to a lug connector. And uh, sure enough, one of them was solid blue. And once I started looking at the original diagrams from Club Car, um, yeah, one of those is a solenoid. There's a solenoid on the left, solenoid on the right, and stuff. So I got that kind of sorted out. Uh, these two solenoids are old. They're they're not made not garbage. They they can keep as spares, but they're no longer important to this build. They're not going to be used. So that leaves this one. So remember, the one was mounted here, and uh, I went and tried to put this one in here, and there's nowhere I can get it to fit on this plate that didn't match up with the holes. And I was thinking I was going to have to, and I, I, I'd have to drill into the here somewhere, or do something, maybe clamp it on. Um, and I thought, oh, I'm going to have to drill. The guy that put this on, put it to... Um, far over, I'm going to have to drill new holes and go that way and stuff. But a guy was over here, a buddy of mine, he looked at these two holes on the controller and said, oh, maybe they mount there. I'm like, nah, that can't be right. And I put it up there and I lined up one hole and the other one didn't line up. I'm just like, nope, it won't work. But in reality, um, these these controllers, they do line up. They line up just fine. And then I go online and I, I was watching another video. A uh, hunting uh, guy has a hunting one that's all spoofed up. And he had his controller mounted in a completely different spot, but there's a solenoid on there. He didn't even mention, I just happened to glance it. So I went looking up the mounting diagram for this and oh, let's see if I can do this in the dark. Uh, it works better here. All right, so uh, let's get myself oriented. Let's move the camera. That'll work better. Okay. So it shows these two holes, and uh, right there, that says solenoid mount. So those two holes are specifically to mount the solenoid. So that made me happy. Even though this solenoid doesn't mount up there. It doesn't match. However, this is just a bracket. And there's four screws here. Well, this light is killing me. It's getting darker as I talk, so it's getting worse and worse. Um, and I take off these four screws, and I can drill another hole, and I should be able to mount it right there with regular, um, with regular like wood screws, because that's going into like a, a plastic grommet, and um, and then that'll just kind of go right in line. No, and since I moved the camera, you can't see what I'm talking about. And that'll go right in line. I might drill two new holes to center it. It's actually really close. If I, I could either hog out these skirt holes, or I could go way up, drill one right below it. I'm gonna stop there. I was gonna actually go through the whole process, but uh, it is completely dark outside. That light doesn't work. That's how, that's the outside. And, uh, and stuff. Alright. 
so I'm gonna so here's a better view of the controller and the motor. And those are the two solenoid mounts. There's the a different solenoid with its own kind of weird coil resistor, which I'm not so sure, sure what it's all about. And to the right of there, you can see one of the holes. You can almost see the other one just uh, uh, barely under it. If I come here, uh, those two holes at the bottom, that's where the original solenoid mounted. There's just not space there. But fortunately, the DCX controller has these two holes for a solenoid mount. And that, um, so if, if you're doing a similar project and you're trying to figure out where to mount your solenoids or how it works, uh, that's kind of the basic idea. Um, tomorrow I'll be getting batteries and hopefully getting the rest of this uh, hooked up. And hopefully then I'll show you, um, I'm going to uh, drill, I'm going to measure. Uh, the sheet actually does contain the, uh, the dimensions. See if I can. Uh, there, um, the sheet shows uh, 21 and a half. Probably that. I assume that's uh, that makes sense as millimeters. And uh, so that shows me the distance between the center. It's a solenoid mount. And it is mounted. Uh, there's a drain hole at the bottom if water gets into it. So they, they did really think this through. Well, if you're looking here at the end, you see these uh, four connectors. And down here, there's these little wire pegs sticking out. But if you look at, if you look at mine, you see a circuit board. But there's those wire pegs. They sell a board, depending on which car you're getting. That kind of just pops on there and that matches up with the wiring harness from the club car so there's no soldering involved there is some crimping of, of wire, extra wires and like i said you want to get taps places because otherwise you're going to have you're going to have a hard time and just uh, uh these are the tap slices i got uh local hardware store but you can probably find them on amazon i might uh, and it is um, uh, 14 gauge wire, so that's what you want to shoot for. Uh, pretty much everything on that harness, everything on this harness is 14 gauge wire. Uh, there is some, uh, the kit from um, Altronics comes with slightly thicker wire. And that's stranded wire is what you're looking at. Actually, it's probably 16 gauge stranded. Um, and all right, just to show a little bit more, there's the two tires. They're hefty, hefty sized tires. Um, let's see if the frame is visible. You can't see it here, but there's well over a foot of clearance from the ground, at least for the main part. Uh, obviously, back here with the mower. The, the motor mount is um, you, you you know you actually only have six inches of clearance uh, so hopefully you don't hit the motor uh, when you're going over things all right uh, that's what I got hopefully tomorrow I'll have another video hopefully tomorrow I'll have another video of uh, putting the solenoid arm to there and hooking up the rest of the wires not going to do every step because the instructions are pretty clear. However, the part with the solenoid uh, did confuse me. And I'll show one other thing that confused me if I can. I'm going to move this light here. Uh, now you're probably. Well, that's not too bad. Okay, and the Altrax documentation, they talked about two bundles, and if it's one, then it's the one that attached to the ignition. And I thought maybe with the, there's a T here, this bundle coming up. Uh, 
this bundle comes out and splits off into T, and I thought maybe that's what they're talking about. But it's actually just one bundle, at least on the 99 Club Card DS. Uh, I believe newer models have a tow, a run tow switch, which basically is a battery disconnect. And that's where the second bundle goes. But um, the wire, the blue wire, going to this uh, guy, which is like a speed controller, that's actually tied into your gas pedal. Your gas pedal presses that. I should just call it a throttle. Press it, basically moves there. And there's a blue wire coming off of that through the harness. And the other blue wire's coming out. And here I used the tap splice. It was so much easier because I would have had uh, to get three wires into the space of one. Maybe just two, now that I think about it. But if it was the double bundle like they had talked about, it would have been three wires. Alright, I think that covers, that covers pretty much everything I'm going to cover tonight. If I uh, zoom out of here. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow.